How's it going guys? My name is Michael and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the wild area. So the wild area is a very important piece in this game. It is a very, very important area. You're going to spend a lot of time in this area trying to do raids and trying to level up your Pokemon. You can use it to actually get a lot of money, get a bunch of different items, rare items, rare Pokemon, all that kind of stuff is going to take place in the wild area. So I thought it was, you know, a very, very important piece of information that I needed to make a video on. If you go into the game early on and you do things correctly in the wild area and you know what you're doing and going into in the wild area, it's going to make the progression in the game that much easier for you. And so there's just a bunch of items that I wanted to cover to make your life a lot easier for the wild area. And there's a lot of things I want to cover. So I'm going to go kind of step by step as we kind of go into it and notice where I'm at. I'm at what you call the meetup spot, I believe is what it's called. Um, so I'll show it. I'll pull it up on the map here. Yeah, so it's called the meetup spot and you got the white trader in the wild area station And so notice these two people that are in front of me You got the guy on the left and you have the girl on your right the girl on your right if, At any point in time when you're trading or training or fighting Pokemon inside the wild area and you start to run low on um, You know health and stuff like that. All you have to do is fast travel back to this meetup spot on the map when you fast travel back to it of course you get the fast travel when you get to the other side of the the meetup spot and everything or the wild area but all you have to do is fast travel back to her at any point and she'll ask you to want to rest your pokemon and of course you can do that so it's basically like a little pokey stop right here right as you go into the wild area also another thing too and i'll talk about watts here in a minute but when you want to go and sell and trade your watts all you have to do is go up talk to this guy and he's got some stuff that you know you can buy with your watts and this one's a timer ball wishing piece surf and some other tms and stuff like that the wishing piece is very very important make sure you always keep a couple of these on you because they're very important because you can actually dump these into uh the little areas to create um a gigantamax or dynamax raid and i'll go over that in a minute as well but keep that in mind that's something very important um, that you need to get but as you start out in the wild area of course you notice these little shimmers and the little glimmers and stuff throughout it those are items so i just got a wishing piece just by walking through the wild area so you can find really rare items and just kind of other things like a jar of honey a pokeball you can get mushrooms all kinds of other stuff just by running around and looking at these things and of course i just found a note that says cooking at your camp can restore hp to your pokemon and even even the pp that you need to use for their moves and blah 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 okay i already know all this okay so that's step number one of course is just looking for those kind of shimmers okay because that just gives you a lot of items and of course you can sell them and use them that sort of thing another thing too this is the little den that i was talking about earlier that you need uh to collect uh watts from okay so if you look at these guys if you walk up to them when they're glowing red it'll say there's a bit of energy trickling out of the den. you gain 50 watts it's free watts you get 50 watts just by going up to one of those things and clicking on it and they're very very important uh, watts are very important because like I said you can go to those trainers uh, the little uh, the watt traders or whatever and they're in a ton of places throughout the uh, the wild area you can you can google and I'm sure I may link one in uh, the actual description of where each trader is located um, because like I said they each give you different items like uh, one like that guy gave me a certain pokeball the next guy has a different type of pokeball um, and I believe there's one that gives you luxury balls. The luxury Pokeball is very, very useful in the game. The reason why is because you can buy those with your Watts and then you can resell them at any Poke Center and make a ton of cash off of them. So I would suggest trying to find that trader that has those luxury balls and just, and just buy as many as you can with the Watts that you've earned. Almost forgot to mention as well, these dens is actually where you can use that wishing piece to create an actual raid. So it says here, there doesn't seem to be anything in the den. Want to throw in a wishing piece. If you throw in the wishing piece, it'll give you the chance of a uh, Dynamax or Gigantamax raid. It'll either show up red or purple. Purple are the rare ones. Red are the common ones. Also, if you see the beams of light shooting off and you can't see it from here, I'm going to show you 
you look see that beam of light the red light kind of back there there's two of them it's in in the sky if you go to one of those that's actually one of those where you can actually you, you know go and engage in a raid if you press on one of those they give you a lot more watts i believe it's 300 watts or something like that if you haven't beaten the game once you beat the league i think it jumps up to 2000 watts if i remember correctly i think it's for the purple one uh, so keep that in mind as well now moving on to the next thing notice these big pokemon flying around outside of the grassy areas when you first start the game and come in through here do not engage these pokemon they are very strong pokemon so i'm gonna go up to this guy and we'll find out what level he is let's see if can i can i get to him come here come here oh, he ran away okay that's fine we'll find another one but they're very strong pokemon so you need to stay away from them Okay, like this guy, he's probably gonna beat the living crap out of me, but we're gonna try him anyways. So when I encounter this guy, watch. It says he's a very strong looking Digger B or whatever. I doubt I will be able to beat him. Doubt it. Yeah, he's level 26. Uh, my guy's level 28. I might actually be able to do it. So let's let's try double kick here. Yeah, so I should be able to knock this guy out pretty easily. But when you first start out, your Pokemon's not gonna be level 28. So I would very well ignore that Pokemon because as you notice, this guy's pretty freaking strong. But also notice, you got a crap ton of XP. So if you do have a Pokemon, if you level them up a lot and you can knock these guys out, do it. That's a fast way to train in this game. But notice, look at these little things. Get a ton of little items. Like I said, you can sell these things at uh, any Pokestop and make a ton of cash. Also notice too, I'm running around on foot and it takes a while because this is a massive area. So what I would suggest to you is an, I would kind of wait until after you get the bicycle to ride around and train in the wild area. Because notice you go so much faster with the bike. And if you're just not starting out the game and you want to know how to get the bike, it does not take a whole lot of time. So once you get through the wild area and you go to Motostoke, there's some cutscenes and everything you need to go through. Once you get done with that, you need to go to Route 3. You need to go through the mine. The mine takes, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes at most. And then you go to Route 4. Then you go to Turfield, and that's your first gym badge. Once you complete that, you go to Route 5. And notice this bridge here. Once you get to this bridge, you'll battle a couple of guys and you will be rewarded with a bicycle. Once you get the bicycle, then come back to the wild area. That way, like I said, once you have the bicycle, it's just so much easier to do things because of how much faster you trek. I mean, you can go around and you can farm watts through these little dens. I mean, literally every time you just go get 50, 50 watts out of it, that sort of thing. And like I said, be very careful because certain parts of the wild area have very strong looking pokemon and they have the potential to knock your entire team out also another thing that i wanted to show you as well is once you get to the, these little fog like foggy areas because the, the the uh the weather changes in the game and once you get to nighttime or in these foggy areas and stuff like that you'll come across a lot of uh ghost pokemon i was just here they were just here where are they yeah see you notice that those ghost Pokemon are going to show up everywhere. You're going to have Ghastly every, everywhere. There's all kinds of strong Pokemon. And be very careful because those Pokemon can knock you out pretty easily. Um, but that's one thing that I wanted to point out is depending on the weather and the time of day, you're going to have different Pokemon showing up. Like for me, it was snowing earlier and I had a bunch of Snovers everywhere. But now... I have a bunch of donkey looking Pokemon. I'm not even sure what the names of those are and a bunch of the Gastlys and stuff. Hey look, more Watts. And another thing that I wanted to bring up as well is fishing. Fishing in this game is a lot different than in previous Pokemon games. In this game, and I'll probably make a different video on this as well, but I might as well go over it briefly. When you first start on this game, you already have a fishing pole, okay? And you can't just go up to random water and use it. I mean, there's no way to use it. You have to actually go up and to use it. You see these little these little holes that are splashing up. You have to wait for one of those to pop up and you have to go right next to it and press on it. And what that'll do is it'll let you fish. If you see the shadows in the water, you'll likely find Pokemon lurking beneath them. Face such a shadow and press A button to cast your line and try to catch up a fish. Fish up a catch. So once you fish, you have to wait for it to bob. 
I forgot to do that. You have to wait for it to bob. Once it bobs, wait for it. Once it bobs, then you press A. Once you press A, it puts you into a Pokemon battle. And look, I got a Magikarp. I actually kind of want to catch this guy. I'm going to try to catch him real quick. Awesome. Now we got a Magikarp. So if you go across this bridge to this other area, the Pokemon get super, super strong. So I would highly suggest not going over here until you're a little bit of a higher level. Maybe maybe beat that first gym, train up a little bit, and then come over here because all these Pokemon are going to be strong looking. Like for instance, I'm going to let one of these guys grab me. <coughs> Very strong looking Sneasel. And they're going to be in the high 20s, I mean in level. Probably even more than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's a level 28. Like I said, they're all all very strong looking over here, so you got to be very careful. Now, the next thing I want to show you is what you need to do when you come across these little berry trees. If you notice, these berry trees look a lot different. Hold on, let me get away from these Pokemon. I don't want that thing catching me. So when you go up to these Pokemon trees, you can shake them. They said it's berry tree. Do you want to shake it? it yes. Notice when you shake the tree, it says an orange berry and a pissing berry fell from the tree. Notice after you shake it, you see how it shakes and then there's a pause and then it shakes again and then there's a pause and it shakes again. That means you can shake it more. Shake it again. So you you found some more berries. Notice there's still a shake and a pause, a shake and a pause. So I can shake it one more time. Shake it one more time. Now you see it shaking very frequently. There's no pause in between. That means if you shake it one more time that you're going to have an encounter with a Pokemon, like a squirrel Pokemon or another type of Pokemon. I can't remember the names of them. So now if you want to engage in that Pokemon, shake it again. But if not, you want to quit. Okay. And then you pick up the berries that fell from the tree. You got an orange berry, two pears, some berries, and three chesto berries and a peck of berry. Now you can move on with your day. Just keep in mind, if it starts shaking frequently like that, you might want to stop if you want to avoid engaging in another Pokemon. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about the Spart or the uh, the Watt Traders is you can actually use them to upgrade your bike. So if you talk to them, let me let me get off my bike here. You go up and talk to the guy. You can actually do a Rotom Rally, which will kind of earn you some stuff, uh, or you can go to improve my bike. And you can spend. What is that? A thousand watts, and it'll allow you to actually charge up the turbo boost faster and give you a little bit more of a kick. I'm gonna go ahead and spin it, see what it does. You can spin it. All right, your bike has extra power since your turbo boost charges faster now. Why not have another go at the Rotom Rally? So then you can do the Rotom Rally and all that other kind of stuff as well. So that Watt Trader is actually a pretty cool guy. Um, and of course, you can see. Uh oh, I did not mean to engage this guy. Oh no. Oh no, I don't know if I can beat him. It's hailing. Ooh. Let's see if I can get away. I got away. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle that guy. Okay, so let's move on from there before I get my butt kicked by another Pokemon. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention as well is you'll, you'll find these red Pokeballs everywhere. Those are just normal items in the game. They do not respawn, so when you... Pick them up, of course. That's about the only time you're going to ever pick them up. So just keep that in mind. Don't go looking for a bunch of them, hoping they'll respawn because they will not. That is a really cool looking Pokemon. I'm not going to lie. I, don't, I haven't even seen that one yet. It's pretty neato. But guys, I think that's going to about do it for this video. If I'm missing some stuff, which I'm, I'm sure I am, make sure just to leave a comment down below. That way some people that are kind of trying to learn more about the wild area can go through the comments and just kind of pick up some knowledge from you guys. And also I may make an updated video on this, but guys, if you found this helpful, make sure you hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for new. But guys, I'm peacing out for now. Have a great day. Great now, wherever you are. And until next time, peace out.